Sorry, I turned my computer on and it updated for 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. All right. Good, Good, evening, ladies. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, select boards call to order March 25th, 2021 at 6.05 p.m. Uh, I'm going to take a roll call. Sheila? Here. Pat? Here. Ed? Here. Mike? Here. Looks like the gang's all here. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is a virtual Board of Selectmen meeting. We're using the Zoom conferencing format. The webinar ID is 968-0852-9290. If you wish to make a public comment and speak on an agenda item, please use the raise your hand feature on your device. The moderator will be notified and will unmute you. Please identify yourself before making the comment. Okay. Item two, approve the March 11th, 2021 Selectman's meeting. Second. I, have, I have a first and a second. Uh, okay, a roll call. Sheila? Aye. Pat? Aye. Ed? Aye. Mike? Aye. Balance is aye. Motion carries. Public forum. This is an opportunity for anyone who wants to address the Board of Selectmen with an issue that is not on the agenda. Do you see any hands? I'm not looking. No, Lori says no. Okay. Item four, consider a new liquor license submitted by First Serve KPT Hospitality Inc. DBA Mabel Lobster Claw located at 124 Ocean Avenue. <clears throat> consider a, re a renewal liquor license submitted by First Serve KPT Hospitality Inc. DBA Mabel's Lobster Claw located at 124 Avenue. Ocean Avenue. That's a mouthful. Mm hmm. So moved. Second. Okay. I have a first and a second. The staff's recommended approval of this license. We will roll call. Sheila? Aye. Pat? Aye. Ed? Aye. Mike? Aye. Allen says aye. Motion carries. Item five consider a renewal liquor license submitted by Surf Surf Edgewater. EBA Mabel's House, formerly Edgewater Inn, located at 126 Ocean Avenue. Staff recommends approval of this license. No moved. Second. Okay, the first and the second. Okay. Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Balance is aye. Motion carries. Okay. Item six. Consider. Renewal liquor <coughs> license. Item wrong. six. Right. Six. That's item six. Consider a renewal liquor license submitted by Seaside Hotel Associates LTD Partnership DBA Wenanum Resort located at 95 Ocean Avenue. Staff recommends approval of the license. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike? Aye. Allen says aye. Motion carries. Okay, item seven. Consider a renewal liquor license submitted by Ches Rosa LLC, DBA Ches Rosa Bistro, located at Building D on Cross Street in Union. Staff recommends approval of the license. So moved. Second. I have a first and a second. Sheila? Aye. Pat? Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Balance is aye. Motion carries. Item eight. Consider a hotel mini bar liquor license submitted by Yachtsman Hospitality LLC, DBA Yachtsman Hotel and Marina Club, located at 57 Ocean Avenue. Staff recommends oh, approval of this license. And maybe I don't. You know, I never heard. Ever since I've been a selectman, I've never even heard of a mini bar license. But it's a state license. And do you know anything more about that, Lori, about a mini bar license? Yeah, if, if uh, Dave wants to bring Jamie Mitchell up, Jamie actually um, has a little information she can share with you. Oh, great.
I'm just curious how it works. You know, I know I, I imagine it's in each and every room or some rooms and all the bottles are little. They're just big. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. Ice before. is big. Well, they already have a liquor license, so it will it'd be just like them bringing a drink back to their room. So, hmm. oh, this Jamie, you muted Jamie. Okay, you sorry guys. Sorry. <laughs> I was ready for you. Um, it actually is a little bit different than bringing, um, like they can't bring a drink from their from the bar back to their room, um, oh. and apparently the license it it was relatively new. Um, the state passed a act in 2009. And just so that we're all clear, they define mini bar, meaning a self-contained locking cabinet refrigerated or refrigerate or unrefrigerated for storage, dispension and sale of alcoholic beverages. So basically they would have like a locked little mini fridge in their rooms that they'll be charged astronomical prices for little nips probably. Um, but there's there's kind of, you know, 10 to 12 different regulations um, that the state kind of put in place that they're required to follow. Um, supply, you know, as far as how it can be stocked, the license that they have to have, where they have to purchase um, beer and wine must be purchased from a wholesale licensor um, supplies for spirits must be purchased from an agency liquor store. Um, it must be equipped with secure locking device that may be unlocked only by persons 21 years of age and older so there are, along with the license the state puts a lot of parameters that they'll be required to follow and there's some pretty hefty fines if they were found in violation of any of the regulations for this license. Especially if the minor gets into it. Exactly. So I, I mean, I, I would assume that they're going to, because th this is the first time for both of them, they're going to err on the way conservative side of caution and in, in trying to manage how it works. And, you know, hopefully it will be successful and maybe we'll see more businesses um, do it next year. So. Typically, what I heard was that it's done in conjunction with the liquor license. It just so happens nobody's wanted to venture down that road, probably because there are such str stringent regulations in place for it. Jamie, why can't I bring? Uh, why can't they bring uh, a drink that they purchased on premise <clears throat> back to their room? Because most hotels allow you to do that. Um, I can look further into that. I didn't ask specifically that question. Um, I just was told when I had called that it wouldn't cover um, because there's parameters like the liquor license itself covers certain parameters in the establishment. Like you can't walk outside so far. So they don't want people, you can't take like a bunch of drinks from the bar and, and just go back to your room. Hmm. Thank you, Jamie. Sure. New Orleans, Sheila. That's where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have any problem taking your drinks where you want to go down there. It's only Good a problem if you get caught with it in a place you're not supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Sure. Item nine, consider a hotel mini bar liquor license submitted by Hidden Pond LLC DBA. Hidden Pond located at did, did you guys vote on number eight? No, we no, we didn't. I'm sorry. No. I'm That's bad. Right. Uh, okay, so we'll do a roll call. Sheila, I I will vote aye for for that. Okay. I don't Pat? know who put it up. We didn't. You didn't ask for um, a motion. Ed, Ed made a motion. We didn't have okay. a second, but you All seconded. Right. I heard you, Sheila. Oh, did I? <laughs> okay. All right. Pat. Aye. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye, motion carries. Okay, item nine, consider a hotel mini bar, liquor license made by Hidden Pond LLC, DBA Hidden Pond located at 354 Goose Rocks Road. So moved. Second. I have a first and a second. Okay, Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. 
Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Allen says aye. Motion carries. Okay. Item 10. Discussion of Cape Corpus Pier Repairs. I'll pass that over to Lori and Mike. Hi, Mike is here to talk to you about the um, quote that's in your packet and about the latest information on the Cape Corpus Pier Repair. So I'll turn it over to Mike. Hi. Um, so as we, we discussed uh, in previous meeting, the pier, the pier has had a, an issue in the corner down by the dinghy float uh, where, where granite has, has uh, collapsed down towards, towards the harbor um, and, is, and is lodged against uh, some of the pier pilings. Um, so we've worked with uh, Barney Baker of Baker Design Consultants and with Pratt Marine, uh, myself, Eric LaBelle, and Chris Mayo, uh, just looking at ways that we think we've got to stabilize this and the, the best plan we've come up with is a sheet piling system that will go around that corner um, and then, then backfilling some stone in, in with that to, uh, to help stabilize the, uh, stabilize the foundation. Um, Mike, am I correct to understand that this would um, not just be a Band-Aid, but we could actually leave this in place when the, the real peer renovations begin? So Barney's going to look at that. I, I think the issue, you know, um, the pilings that are that are uh, near the near the ramp for the dinghy float um, can stay. You know, the, the, those will have no problem staying. I think we have to talk to the lobstermen about about uh, that they're okay with leaving the sheet piling uh, that's up against the pier that where they berth. Uh, that they're going to be okay with that. If, if they're okay with that, I think Barney's going to be very happy to leave it there. Well, is the plan to have the sheet piling on the inside in front of the granite retaining wall, or what's left of that granite retaining wall, and then have the fender pilings on the outside as it is now? Yes, but all that granite gets redone. That's part of that. Everything under the under the uh, bait shed is going to get redone. Right. So when the boats come to the pier, they're not going to be up against the sheet pile. It'll be in a similar location as to where the granite face is now if, the outside right. of it if they can if he can if it'll drive there yes yeah okay okay um but uh, so we've come and and the real issue with that is is having proc come in with their pile driving barge uh is currently up at up at peaks island doing some work with dot uh so they've got to they've got to get out of that job come down here uh, do this one real quick, and then get back get back up to Peaks Island. So they're going to charge us twenty two thousand dollars just to drive the drive the barge down. You know, pick up the materials, get the materials on the barge, go down to Peaks Island, get get the barge down from Peaks Island to Cape Corpus and back. Um, and that's really, I think, what they're charging us is about a day of mo mo you know, uh, the barge will be un unusable at Peaks Island for two days. While they're while they're driving back and forth, and then probably um, you know four to five days while they're working at at the at the pier. So Is that the latest, Mike, because I was told they weren't going to do that. They were going to actually bring a barge from um, Rockland. Rockland. Down. They okay. did. They did. They do have one at Peaks, Mike. And and when I heard Sean talk about it, because we were talking about could they bring the one from Peaks, and he said they couldn't get that one away. I thought they were bringing the one from Rockland. I thought yeah. it even said that in this proposal too. But I talked to Chris yeah. yesterday. I happened to bump into him, and we had a long conversation about you know the project. I, I will check with that. They, they, they may have to bring the material down, and I thought they were using the barge from Peaks for 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 driving. In the in their quote, it says they're going to mobilize and demobilize another barge from yeah. and to Rockland. So yeah, I'm sorry. Well, right. it's okay. I don't think it matters as long as they come and they do it and they have the equipment. Um, you know, it's relevant yeah. to us. Yeah. When are they? Go ahead. So we told them we'd, we'd get a decision from you guys today, and if it was a go, they'd, they'd work it in their schedule for, for pretty much an emergency repair. Great. Perfect. So Great. how long is it going to take them, they say, approximately? Four to five days. Four to five days? Yeah. That's not and good. we're going to provide some of the granite for that. Did I read that correctly, Mike? 
Yeah, I, I'll work with uh, with Proc. We'll, we'll bring, you know, we'll 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 be able to just bring down whatever granite he needs. Uh, it, it basically to to keep the ends at each end of the of the repair uh, to make sure nothing washes, none of the stone washes back out. We're going to place some granite blocks there. I think it's it's between six and eight blocks that we'll, we'll bring down to him. So, you have an estimate on that, correct? Yeah, they're uh, they're looking at ninety thousand dollars. They're not cheap, are they? <laughs> so, no. Lori, where where did you say you would like to take that money from? So currently, you do have funding in the peer reserve account that we've been saving for the um, reconstruction of Cape Porpoise Pier, and we've been using towards the engineering. So you can use that peer reserve money now towards this repair. Um, in order for us to move forward with the um, actual reconstruction and repairs we had planned, and if we are successful with our state of Maine and EDA grant, <clears throat> we would need that 90,000 replaced to meet our match. So what I would say is you can approve this 90,000 from reserves now and then when you go to your budget documents and I would be proposing that we take 100,000 from capital reserve and add it to the peer reserve for FY22. So we make up that balance and we're still um, able to meet our matches for those other grants. Sounds like a plan to me. Like a plan, yeah. Mike, did, um, did uh, Chris talk to you about redoing the inside of the bait shed too? I know it's a separate project, but while we're talking money tonight. I, I think that's a different, would be a different contractor. The question is, um, is it worth it? It'd be very expensive to try to put uh, to put grout in there by just drilling holes. I think if it collapses some more, then actually the openings would be bigger. If we do have any more collapse inside that building, we're going to have to bring a concrete truck down and just pump grout into there. Um, but the question is, you know, right now the the slab is holding, so we'd actually have to break the slab to get the concrete underneath it. So we're sort of keeping an eye on it, and, and as long as it's usable, you know, we can we can keep going as we are. If it does if it does break, our plan is just to open up the floor and get some concrete under that floor. We also so, talked about a real short term of maybe having you guys highway come down and put some hot patch in some of the divots in there. And I know that's a it might be a crapshoot, but it might be a real um, cheap temporary fix to some of the problems. The problem is the floor in there is so uneven that, especially the older guys, those drums are heavy and they're having a hard time getting them out of there in the morning. I'll have to get with Chris and look and see what we can yeah. do with, with our patch material. I'd appreciate it if you could uh, talk to him about that. Yeah, no, he's very concerned about that and yeah. we'll, we'll work with him as we need to. All right. Thank you, so, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so we need a motion to go ahead and Move this so move to take ninety thousand dollars out of the. Uh, do you want to just the ninety thousand, Lori? And then we'll put a hundred back in there. Yeah, I would say just to authorize this this quote um, in a contract with Plot, mm -hmm. and we'll use the money from the peer reserve account. Okay, well that's my motion: ninety thousand from the peer reserve uh, to Proc Marine. Second. Emergency. I have a first and second. Any more discussion on this? No. Okay. Roll call. Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Item 11, review final fiscal year 2022 budgets and make recommendations. What I'm going to do, there's six categories here. And I'm going to go through each category. And if there's anybody that wants to stop, I'd like to go ahead and vote on each category in its entirety. And uh, but if there's any questions, stop me. If you, have, if you want to talk about something, is that okay with you guys? That's excellent. We've been through this several times, and I think if anybody has any questions, they'll they'll say something. Okay. Uh, the first category, administration. Zone. Do you want me to go ahead and 
and, and mention the amounts? I can do that. Just the total. Okay. Administration, Zoning Board of Appeals, Conservation Commission, Growth Planning Committee, legal fees, insurance, community development, planning and development for a total of $2,078,769. Is there any discussion on this one? Hearing none, I'd like to have a motion on that. I move we approve the two million seventy-eight thousand seven hundred and sixty-nine dollars. Okay. Okay, I have a first and a second. <coughs> Sheila? Aye. <coughs> Excuse me. Pat? Aye. Ed? Aye. Mike? Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Category two, police department, communications, fire department, CHEMS, emergency management, animal control, harbor master, for a total of $3,030,000 or $30,630. Any questions on these? No, I move $3,030,630. Second. The first and the second. Okay. Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Category three. Solid waste, health, welfare, social services, shellfish, public restrooms. For a total of $821,911. Yeah. Move eight hundred and twenty-one thousand nine hundred and eleven dollars. Second. We have a first and a second. Okay, Sheila. Sheila. Okay. Uh, Pat. Aye. Pat. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Category four: Highway Department, Utilities, Shade Tree, Street Lights. Cemetery for one million two hundred and sixty-six thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars. Is there any questions on any of this? I move that amount. Second. I have a first and a second. Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Item five. Recreation, Graves Library, Cape Corpus Library, Parsons Way, Goose Rocks Beach Advisory, Contingency and Miscellaneous for a total of $704,190. Is there any questions? So moved. Second. I have a first and a second. Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Category six. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see. Debt service, capital outlay, administration, police, communications, fire reserve, highway, road improvement, sidewalk construction, special projects, piers. Now, I, it, right now it's two million three hundred seventy-one thousand eight hundred fifty-eight dollars. I think we want to change that, don't we, Lori? So this is yes. where we would increase it to three hundred thousand. And so the revenue would also increase by a hundred thousand on the capital reserve transfer, but you don't do that until you vote on the warrant. So you wouldn't vote on that part tonight. But this part, yes, you would increase it to two million four seventy one eight fifty eight. Is that correct, Jen? Yes, you got it. Okay, so do you need a separate motion to increase the peer? No, you just need a total. Just need okay. a total. All right. So, any questions on this? No, I move that we um, move, uh, expend $2,471,858 on those loans. Do we, do we add that 100 now, Lori, or do we wait for the, we had it now, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I have a first. Do I have a second? Second. I have a first and a second. So, Sheila. 
Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Allen says aye. Motion carries. So that, so the whole total, I guess, is going to be changed by a hundred thousand dollars. Correct? It would be ten million. <clears throat> excuse me, ten million three hundred and seventy-four thousand one hundred and seventy-five dollars. So moved. Thank you. Do we need a vote on that? No. I, I didn't think so. Okay. I, I have I have an informational question. I had asked earlier today, but it was late. I just, you know, we've got a $592,000 increase in the budget. I just want to know, is the bulk of that economics? I mean, uh, inflation? Yeah. Did you get my answer? No. Oh, I sent the answer back to everybody. I saw it. Yes. Was it on message or what? What? Was it on, on message or email? Yeah, it was our message. Um, so the answer is that um, 133,000 is due to salary and benefit increases. There's 120,000 of that is for the new planner to support um, short-term rental regulation and planning services. 50,000 is for short-term rental software. 70,000 of it is for an additional six months of recycling. And 200,000 of it is for increase in capital. So the economics of it was very small. The economics of it is fairly small besides the economics of the labor market, yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Any more questions on it? No. Okay, okay. item 12, annual appointment of town officers. I'll go ahead and I'll read. We'll, take, we'll, just, we'll move the whole slate, but I'll go ahead and read uh, everybody and what they do. And then uh, we'll vote on it. Okay, Animal Control Officer Deborah Higgins, Assessor's Agent Rebecca Nolte, Code Enforcement Officer Warner Gilliam, Assistant Code Enforcement Officer Gregory Reed, Assistant Code Enforcement Officer Andrew Welch, Plumbing Inspector Warner Gilliam, Assistant Plumbing Inspector Gregory Reed, Assistant Plumbing Inspector Andrew Welch, Constable Jamie Mitchell. Emergency Management Director, Craig Sanford. Fire Chief, John Everett. Fire Inspector, John Everett. Harbor Master, Kay Porpoise. Uh, Christopher Mayo. Harbor Master, Kenny Bunk River. Christopher Mayo, and that's an interim uh, position for right now for him. Um, till we find somebody else <clears throat> to take his place. Health Officer, Jamie Mitchell. Register of Voters. Health Officers Can Allison Kennaway. Oh, wait a minute. You do well, I missed, I'm sorry. Uh, Jamie's having over. a heart attack, thinking Go I don't ahead. know anything oh, about oh. that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the I'm promotion, Allison. I'm blaming my glasses. <laughs> Health Officer Allison Kennaway. Public Ac Access Officer uh, Jamie Mitchell. Register of Voters Jamie Mitchell. Road Commissioner. Michael Claus, Shellfish Warden, Everett Leach, Street Naming and Numbering Delegate, John Everett, Tax Collector, Lori, Mit uh, Lori Smith, Town Clerk, Jamie Mitchell, Town Forester, Patrick Briggs, Treasurer, Jennifer Ward, Tree Warden, John Ripley. So, out of so moved. Yeah, I moved the slate. Second. I have a first and a second. Okay, Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Okay. Item 13, discussion of proposed zoning ordinance amendment. I guess that's uh, Warner's deal. Hi, Warner. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Warner. Hi, hey, Warner. So, uh, so for this evening, I know we've talked uh, about this a couple of times, uh, but you have before you a proposed zoning amendment uh, that would uh, do a couple of items. You know, one, it would allow for residential mixed use uh, as a conditional use to be allowed in the dock square zone. 
uh, this proposal also would increase the number of residential units uh, from two to four, uh, and also would reduce the restriction regarding only one principal building per lot. Yeah. Uh, some important things to note with this proposal, though, uh, and I know there, there were some <coughs> questions, I think, from folks uh, in the public. Uh, you know, Dock Square has always been a mixed use zone. And so residential uh, and commercial have always been, you know, two activities, you know, that have occurred in Dock Square. Uh, really what this does is it just lets the two exist in, in the same building um, from a practical perspective without doubling the lot size. Uh, the dwelling units uh, in the residential mixed use standard are required to be primary residences, not short term rentals, and that's already in the current language. Uh, and also the current ordinance uh, does require that the parking for the residential use uh, be, account be accounted for. I think it's a great idea myself, and I'm surprised that I it wasn't already done. Yeah, I was surprised about that. Werner, can you explain the, uh, why there's an increase from two to four, just because? Sure, sure. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've heard from some property owners that would take advantage of this, uh, that, you know, in order for it to, you know, to work practically for them, you know, there's a desire for more units than just the two. Uh, and a number of, we do have a building in, in the square that already does have, I, I want to say more than two units already. Uh, so it's not inconsistent with what, you know, with what we have. Okay. You know, our apartment buildings are shrinking in town. I mean, I, I can think of two school days and uh, not, yeah, school days and uh, Senate, Senate House. house. Senate and house. that's that's almost 16 apartments. It is 16 apartments it is, yeah. uh, that we've lost. So, you know, that's that's pretty tough to lose something like that. So I'm, I'm, I think this is a, a great idea, great thing that we should do. There is. Do we need a motion on this, Lori? Yes. You know, I didn't know if you wanted to see if anybody in the public had any questions. Oh, yes. Sure. Do you see any hands raised? No blue hands raised. Okay. So we would be looking to see whether you are accepting this language or you have any changes to this language and whether you'd be looking to place it on the June warrant. I think that we should. And I, I looked at it and I thought it, the language is fine. What about you, Mike? Do you see it? Do you look at it? Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think it's uh, something that we need. Yeah. So I guess I'll obtain a motion. I moved. Second. Okay. First. Do you have a second? Second. Yes. Right. Okay. Sheila. Aye. Pat. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Warner. Hey, item Thank you. Thanks, Warner. Thanks, Warner. Uh, item 14, discussion of 4th of July fireworks. Guess that's you, Lori. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Chief Sanford wants to come up and, <clears throat> and uh, have anything to say. I didn't warn him about this ahead of time, but... <laughs> Um, I have been uh, discussing uh, 4th of July fireworks with the town of Kennebunk. Uh, Kennebunk is the one who signs the contract. And so um, the fireworks company is particularly concerned about having proper notice um, about fireworks shows because you can imagine they're not doing the number of shows they've done in past years and so they need to get the supplies in in time. And it sounds like um, we're going to have to make a decision in the next couple of weeks um, on the contract. Uh, the concern um, that Kenny Bunk has discussed is that uh, currently, you know, under the governor's orders, we couldn't have a crowd of that size. Um, whether or not that would be allowed in July, you know, are things going to be better by then? Um, that's possible. Uh, but right now we don't know that. I think the other concern is that um, there's high tide um, that particular day at uh, fireworks time. And so in Kennebunk, uh, that means that the, there won't be any beach available for people to stand on. 
So social distancing people will be more challenging. I think those are some of their concerns. So we did talk about um, whether to not have them all together, uh, whether to you know go forward and hope we don't have to cancel, or whether to postpone the fireworks for later in the summer or early fall when um, life might be more certain. Um, I did poll some other managers across the state to see what people were doing. Um, Old Orchard Beach was the only one who said, yes, we're having fireworks. Um, there was a group of Good people. people <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Sheila, come on down. And, <laughs> and um, there was a group of towns who say they are discussing it in April for their boards, and they're kind of tentative right now whether to do it or not. And then there was a few that said we're postponing our fireworks till later in the year. Okay. Well, this can... All hinges on Kenny Bunk whether they do it or not, right? Because they pay for half. They pay for half, yep. Yeah. And they technically have the contract with the company. What were you going to say, Sheila? I'm going to say that according to what I've heard, uh, everybody in the state of Maine has an option of the vaccine starting mm. May 1st. So people are now getting their vaccine starting May 1st. All ages can get their vaccine. That gives us two months before the 4th of July for everybody to get their vaccine. Yeah, but what about all the people from out of state? If they're traveling here, then most of them will probably have had their vaccine. Um, and if they don't, then don't go to the fireworks. My, my, my attitude is, we take care of our own people. We take care of the people from Kennebunk and Kennebunk Court and the surrounding towns. If the tourists want to come, that's their option. Um, you know, we will have two months under our belts with everybody having their vaccine. I just think that it, it's an optimistic attitude and, and I think it's good for the town. It's, it's, I think it's good for the businesses. Um, I think it's good for people all around. Yeah, Chief, Chief Sanford also reminded me that Colony Beach this year will be closed. So normally that's where we've parked um, our uh, handicapped vehicles and people have used that as a site as well. Well, it all... what if we did Labor Day? So what is Kenny Bunk saying? What has Kenny Bunk, has, have they decided anything yet? They are contemplating it. So we have to kind of wait to see what they're going to do. See but, what they contemplate. But I mean, if you guys had particular thoughts about it, I would convey that to them. Okay. They have asked what our thoughts are. You got mine. Well, I agree with Sheila. I would rather wait. I would too. I don't want to put people at risk because I know people will be there and they won't be vaccinated. Who, who would you be putting at risk? Anybody who hasn't had vaccine. Yes. It could be anybody. Who, and it could is be, it up to them or is it up to us? And it could, it's, it's up to us. We, we have to make sure that people, I mean, it could no, be. No, we don't have to make sure. We yeah, leave it we up do. to the individual. No. It's not up to us to, to tell people what they can and cannot do. Well, look, it's not we true. We tell people what they can and cannot do every every time we meet. The the uh, thing that I was going to say, uh, Sheila, was that that even if we have our vaccine, and with the mutations going around and so forth, we're still exposed for five or ten percent, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you're not going to suppose they're going to get real sick and need to go to the hospital, but You've got a plethora of people coming here. I don't know how many, but but coming here without, uh, uh, we don't know whether yeah. coming from out of state or wherever, even here in yep. Maine, we're only, gonna, we're only gonna have, we'll have can, I finish? can I finish? Can I finish? Sure. Okay, then, then you can come at me all you want, anytime. <clears throat> but I'm just saying that, that uh, the, the even the people in Maine, we're only gonna be, they're estimating now 65%, maybe 70% of the people in Maine want to get in, uh, vaccination. So I, I think that it, it, right now it's a risk. And I think uh, July 4th, I think 
I'm, I'm with that. I'd rather wait. So my question is, we don't know what Kenny Bunk's going to do. Uh, I would like to go ahead. If Kenny Bunk were to have him on the 4th of July, I'd be for it. And if they didn't want to do it on the 4th of July, uh, and they wanted to do them later on in the year, I right, before that. Too. Okay. That's how I'm looking at it. Because if we do it, if we go on our own, we're only going to have half as many fireworks as we normally would. We'll just keep I don't even think we could go on our own. We don't have a place to to, um, yeah. to launch them from. You know where they used to launch them from? Behind the hardware store. Behind the hardware store. Absolutely. Of course, yeah. Nobody knows where that is anymore. We used to launch them in the harbor for the uh, for the uh, uh, Phil Matthews. Yeah. Phil yeah. Matthews. Yeah. yeah. Those were the best fireworks there were. They were. Well, that was we yeah. best company. They yeah. were, it, and you were we right there the, too. I mean, we you were. We had the best people. Two hundred yards from it. It was the best fireworks I've been to for a lot of years. Yeah. Wanna, I can cool. get. All right. If you want me, I can get them for the Fourth of July. <laughs> so, let's, does let's that sound? For, does that sound good? Kennebunk. Yeah, let's wait. See what Kennebunk does. Yeah, yeah. Because they're going to need our help too, because they only yeah. pay for half, yeah. and we pay for the other half. But I think Kenny Bunk wants to know what our feelings are, right? Well, my Robert? big concern would be, you know, spreading out. And as um, somebody adroitly pointed out, we're not going to be able to use Colony Beach this year. Or, or Kennebunk Beach. No. Nope. They're not going to be able to use Kennebunk Beach? The, the tide is high at the same time as the oh, fireworks, no. so the beach okay. is gone. Yeah. yeah. You know, their beach disappears at high tide. Haven't th hasn't that happened in the past as well? I but think it's just in a, the past. I think the, the concern is the social distancing, trying to still give people space and not having space. Well, I'm in favor of it if Kenny Bunk decides to do it the 4th of July. If not, if they do it at a later day, I'm in favor of that too. I, I don't see how it could be anything any different in a way because we have to pay for half of it. And I did, I did, uh, I did say to um, Kenny Bunk that we will be celebrating in 2021 our 200th year of being called Kenny Bunkport. And Kenny Bunk celebrated their 200th year last year, and they couldn't celebrate because of COVID. And so we could have a bicentennial celebration between the two towns. That's a good idea. We could have both. <laughs> so I guess. And I can. Well, I, go ahead. I have the, I have the best company to tell you about. Go ahead. We're listening. No, I mean it's Atlas Atlas Fireworks. They're the ones who did um, your events, right, Sheila? Right. They, they did an excellent job. Yeah, and they did. Yeah. They are the ones that do Prelude. <laughs> Okay. They do a good. They do. They do a really good job. I haven't seen the prelude ones. I I don't go out after dark in the winter, seeing as I work outside. <laughs> well, they're e they're as equally as good. So, I guess we'll just see what happens. Uh, with Kenny Bunny. Item fifteen: Consider proposal of a contest for the creation of a town flag to commemorate Kenny Bunk Ports Bicentennial. 2021. I think this is an awesome idea. And I, think, this is great. I think, I think, where's Tracy? There's Tracy. I'm here. Yeah. Well, thank you for the nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go from one celebration to the next. Um, no, so, you, you did a lot of work Lori, on this. Yeah. Well, as Lori mentioned, it is our bicentennial year. And what better way than to have a town flag that is created by one of our residents or artists or students. It could really be anybody. Um, it would be a nice symbol of our past, present, and future. And we, it was something that residents could display at their homes, stores could display on their storefronts. So it's just a feel-good type of thing that we could use during this this time when we're all getting tired of the same old thing. So um, it would just, it would be a fun event that would bring the community together. And we haven't really worked out all the parameters, but 
just wanted some approval to start working on it and move forward with it. I'll get a copyright on what we come up with so we don't lose money. <laughs> yes. No, we don't want to do that. So it would be it's nice great to let idea. the school kids get involved and anybody else from the town of Kennebunk Fort to get involved and do their own thing and, and sub submit something to us and give them a, a what do you think the time what what are you looking for a, as a time frame well i was hoping for maybe by the end of may to receive any submissions so that we have time to have the the vote and decide which one we wanted and then have time to get them made up before summer or around summertime hopefully by the 4th of july and also Who's going to be just the deciding? Are we going to have a committee, or is the select board going to decide who? Well, won? that's that's up to you. You can either decide as a board, or you could have a subcommittee of um, two or three people and decide from there. That's really up to you. Well, it's a community project, so I maybe my suggestion would be is maybe find you know three individuals that from the from this community to go ahead and be the judges. Yes. That's what you guys think. Yeah. Right. I don't think it should be us. Yeah, I don't think so either. You're right. Okay. Good. Enough yeah. to do, right, Mike? No, I just think that uh, Alan's right about the community people. Maybe yeah. somebody from the business area, somebody from uh, the uh, school. Some of the galleries. Where? The what? Some Jill? of the galleries. The, the art gallery. gallery. Yeah. Yeah. So something like that. You know? either, either three or five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there are some criteria for a perfect flag. If you'd like to have me list them off, there's yes. just five That'd of them. Great. Yeah. So keep it simple. It should be so simple that a school age child could replicate it from memory. Um, it had should have meaningful symbolism representing our community. There should just be two or three basic colors, red, blue, green, black, yellow. Um, no lettering or seals. That's a big no-no. And it should be distinctive and not a copy of another flag. So there's this whole society out there that it's called the Vexological Association. And they, it's did you all about flags. Did you study that word? I did. <laughs> no, she I practiced. Sheldon Cooper's <laughs> fun with flags. Yeah, yeah right. So, exactly. <laughs> So I thought we could have a spot on the website for this and we could post that video of Sheldon. And then there's also a <laughs> TED talk that's really interesting about the whole flag process. And so, yes, yeah, so I've learned a lot, lot in the last few days. So how are we going to get this out to the public? So I will do up a flyer and do an entry form that lists all the submission and we'll just blast it out through email, Facebook, post it at the, um, at the post office and Atlantic call and just try to get the word out there. Send it to the school. Maybe yes. it can also put a press release out. Yep. One of my questions for the board is we've talked about our residents and artists and businesses, but can anybody submit an application, whether they live in Kenny Bunkford or not? If I'm an artist in Illinois and I want to submit, is that within the perimeter? I just thought I'd ask some of these questions before we got too far down the road. But, you know, you don't forget, to? there's a people who have come here um, as tourists. And I, I agree. I agree. But I'm just asking what everybody's thought process is. Yeah. Hopefully when we the people that we choose make the decision that it will be anonymous, you know, they'll just look at the flags and not who created them. Any names? Yeah. yeah we, they won't find out who did it until they've chosen a winner. And speaking of that, we are, the, the winner should, I think, get some kind of a prize. Sure. You know? Yeah, they get a flag. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a good, you know, they certainly but should. But great. <laughs> But we'll have to talk about that later, what that might be. But I think they deserve more than the flag. But that's me. Ah, uh, so I guess you we're a free set. dinner down at your restaurant. I don't have a problem with that either. See? Take them for a boat ride, whatever. I could. <laughs> so so I guess we we're all set on this. 
All right, I'll get started. Thank Good you. Good idea, Tracy. Well, it wasn't my idea. I cannot take credit, but I did run with it. Make sure you put Sheldon's picture out there on Facebook <laughs> yes. or whatever you do. I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 16. Accept the donation of $1,000 from the Goose Rocks Beach Fire Company to the nurse's general account. So moved with Hello. much appreciation. Second. First, do I have another second? Sheila? Yep. Uh, aye. Ed? Aye. Pat? Aye. Mike? Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Uh, I'm going to go to Lori first because I think you had something else you want to bring up under other business. Yes, yeah, so we got our new, two new um, Hyundai electric cars, and um, the departments have been using them. And so uh, we had talked about trying to identify them as town cars and also highlighting that they are electric and uh, clean, green energy. <clears throat> and so uh, because they are leased vehicles, we were looking at a way to um, mark them without uh, creating any damage to them since we have to return them in three years. So Tracy um, did reach out to a couple of different companies um, to get pricing for wrapping the cars and a design that we worked on. And I did send that out to the selectmen. Um, and uh, basically, it would have the town seal on the hood and on both sides and on the rear. And, and then it would have um, you know, a green logo on the back that says that they're part of a green fleet. Uh, this company. Uh, in particular, is in New Hampshire, but they come on site, which is nice. So we just give them a garage space, and they wrap them right here. We don't have to drive them to that. So the price per vehicle is twelve hundred and twenty dollars, <throat> and so um, it is a way to highlight them and to mark them as town vehicles. Um, it would be a wrap, which would be artistic and I think nice, but certainly it's a twelve hundred dollar price per vehicle as well. What's the board's idea? I make a motion we do that. <clears throat> second. I have a first and a second. I think it's a lot of money for not. Okay. It, when you say wrapped, what do you mean by wrapped? Yeah. Did you see the email, Sheila? What's that? Mm -hmm. So have you have you ever seen those um, buses in in the city? that have like a logo all over the bus or an ad all over the bus. It's basically a wrap. And so um, so what they do is they put a film over the car. So the car still looks exactly like the car, but the printing is on the film and then it is like heat shrunk to the car. So it helps protect it. So what happens is at the end of the three years, we remove the wrap and we turn the car and um, the concern was we looked at magnets and things like that to put the town seal on, but it will discolor the paint, the thought processes, and that could lead to um, issues when we go to return them. And I don't think that we want to buy them after the lease is over. No, we were told they're 22,000 after the three years. So the technology is going to be changing so much. Right. Yeah. Uh, Sheila, you've seen the Port Lobster truck, the little wagon that has the lobster logos and all that stuff all over it. That's what a wrap is. That's wrapped. Okay. And so, I just, you know, I have, uh, go ahead. It's money for a free car. Oh, so I, I have a first, go ahead. What's that? Ed? No, I get it, Sheila. I. But I think we've gone through this, and I think that the importance here is for people to see our public face that we are doing something for climate change. I mean, it's this is a PR thing, is what it is, you know, and and let people know and let people know that we are driving some green vehicles. I think it's about expressing your values. Yes. So when people see those town vehicles, they know that that's a value you represent. Yeah. Okay. So I have a first and a second. And are we all ready to vote? Yep. No more discussion. Okay. Sheila. I'm going to vote nay. Okay. Ed. Aye. Pat. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Okay. Sheila, do you have anything else? I have um, nothing. Excuse me, Lori, do you have anything else? I'm sorry. 
No. Nope. Okay. Sheila? Nothing. Pat? Nope, I'm good. Ed? Uh, I'm good, thank you, Alan. Mike? I'm good. And so am I. So. I moved the okay. warrants. Okay, I have a first. Second. A first and a second. Sheila? Aye. Ed? Aye. Pat? Aye. Mike? Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Item nine. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> I have a first. Second. I have a second. Okay, Sheila. Aye. Ed. Aye. Pat. Aye. Mike. Aye. Alan says aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Do you Thank need you. us to come in and sign anything tomorrow, Lori? Yes, yep, please. we have all those liquor licenses and the warrant. Okay, I'll be in tomorrow. I'll be in the all right. See you. That